UK's leading sports medicine provider for schools and clubs. We ensure sport is safer than ever by making it easy for you to provide gold standard medical care to your players. Our head injury and concussion care service provides your players with seven day a week access to some of the UK's most experienced concussion doctors who make sure the correct diagnosis is made and manage each player's recovery until they are fit to return to sport. We also provide you with the education, policy and administrative support you need to confidently manage injuries, giving you and your players' parents peace of mind. Using our innovative R2P injury management system, injuries can be quickly recorded, parents and staff automatically notified, doctor appointments booked, players' recovery tracked and injury analysis downloaded. Our system even integrates with other school systems, saving you admin time. Our full sports medicine service is tailored to your organization's specific needs, designed to best support your sports program and medical setup. It includes our head injury and concussion care service, plus weekly sports doctor clinics, access to physiotherapists, match day medical support and more. Return to Play are partnered with over 60 of the UK's leading schools and clubs. Get in touch to find out more. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home, School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! Oh, oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and win the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and a regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Hello and welcome to the 2022 England Colleges Finals. We've got two very special games coming up for you today. First up at 11.30, Hartbury College Under-18 Girls against Exeter College Under-18 Girls, followed by the Men's Under-18 ECRFU Colleges Cup Final, Hereford Sixth Form College against USP College. Now this first game, the girls' game, is a showcase event. Hartbury College and Exeter College, two of the finest schools in the country. We've got 15 junior internationals on the field today and we have got a very very special set of players coming up now Hartbury College and Exeter College they met well they didn't meet in fact Hartbury College won the girls Acer finals at Rosslyn Park Exeter College won the girls under 18 finals at Rosslyn Park this might be the 15 aside game but we are seeing a meeting of champions here at Walsall RFC very shortly we'll be going through the teams with you but just to introduce the referees for the day we've got Fiona Brunt will be taking charge of this one with Casey Allen and Becky Piddleston alongside her. Hartbury College will begin things with they are led by fly half Keris Gold. Inside of her Mathilda Ryle in the centres Naomi Brennan and Rosanna Burtonshaw and in the back three Tilly Smale, Betty Matthews and Nell Metcalf. Up front, Amelia Williams, Olivia Constable and Kira Leet. Second row, Tess White and Lola Whitley. 
Hannah Kibble, Sophie McQueen and Gwenon Hopkins make up an all-star back row for Hartbury College. He will be in the black and red hoops, by the way. On the bench, Chelsea Matthews, Dally Hopkins, Ellie Murrell, Serene Webster, Jess Stokes, Millie Hyatt, Lee Brock. And they are led by Oliver Wilson, the director of rugby, who's alongside Harry Wilson, Zoe Allcroft and Georgia Brock. Exeter College, well, they're skippered by fly half Daisy Womack. At scrum half alongside her is Ava Lewis, and in the centres, Jess Phillips and Danny Priest. Back three of Cat Walker, Clara Grizzle Johnson, and Evie Walker. And then up front, Ham Hannah Sams, Molly Thomas, Keena Massey in the front row, Ellie Wood and Josie Plant in the second row, Bella Hartley, the, the uh, vice captain, playing at six. Seven is Gemma Cadle, eight, Lily Plowman. And on the bench, Millie Twig, Lucy Ward, and Marlon Martin. David Kimberley will be leading them as the forwards coach. Steve Perry is a backs coach, coach and Ailey Sinclair is the overall coach who's also a player with the Exeter Chiefs. So a bit of a battle off the field in the coaching stakes as well because Zoe Allcroft, of course, World Rugby Player of the Year, 24 caps. She's on the Hartbury College side, on the Exeter, Exeter College side, Ailey Sinclair. Two teams just going through their final chats. I've been watching them warm up. Already some great skill on show and you'll be able to see in just a second the, uh, the ladies are just lining up arm in arm in front of our commentary position. That is because we are going to be having a minute's applause just before the game begins. That is in memory of two very special people. Maddie Lawrence, former UE student uh, and her, who sadly passed away. Her number 11 shirt is being retired at UE. And also for David Sims, the three times capped Gloucester and ex Exeter chief member and former member of staff at Exeter College. Girls have had a self-imposed moment of silence there. The referees hadn't actually arrived yet in order to orchestrate that. They're just arriving onto the field now, for which I believe it will be a moment's applause in memory of Maddie Lawrence and David Sims. And the Red Roses will be following suit in the game this weekend. Well, there we have it, a double memory for Maddie Lawrence and David Sims. Silence followed by applause. And we are just about ready to get underway. Let's hope that's the first time the officials are late in this one. Harpery College on the left-hand side of your screens in their black and red hoops. On the right-hand side of your screens, Exeter College in the white, blue and black hoops. We are moments away from this women's under 18 showcase event. Harbury College v Exeter College. 
to superstars of women's under 18 rugby. And away we go. And it's a deep kickoff from Kerris Gold. Defensive line from Hartbury up fast. They've been absolutely fantastic on their run towards this game. Only conceded two tries in the four games preceding this. Next to college, no mean feat themselves though. A few more points conceded, but they have been romping home on the try scoring front. So look to play from inside their own, their own 22. A real feature of the women's game at under 18 level, this. It's that ambition to go from deep. We saw it a lot over at Bristol University earlier this season. But it's a penalty X to college. And Daisy Womack will go to the corner. No, she won't. She goes quickly. Charging into contact, they go through Hannah Sams. But it's a superb turnover from Sophie McQueen. Well, we said to look out for this Hartbury College back row, didn't we? And Sophie McQueen, at almost the first opportunity, gets herself over the ball and earns a turnover. Kick doesn't quite go, though. So Exeter College will counter-attack into the hands of Gemma Cadle. Her battle against McQueen, one to watch this morning here at Walsall RFC. Been superbly hosted so far today by Walsall RFC. Club with great history. As Womack looks to bring her back line into play. Taken in by Ellie Wood. But again, it's a penalty. Hartbury College. Dominant on the floor in the early part of this game. And they will take the three points on offer. It looks to me as though right wing Betty Matthews is going to be in charge of the kicking. No, I take that back. It's inside centre, Rosanna Burtonshaw, who very helpfully helped me confirm the team sheet earlier on. I promised I'd give her a shout out for that. Do you believe it? Four full sets of team sheets for today's games. Doesn't get much better than that. Burtonshaw. Gives Hartbury College the lead, 3-0. A strong start from the Gloucestershire side. So many ties, of course, to Gloucester Hartbury. The Allianz Premier 15s team. Two crucial turnovers in this opening three minutes and their reward is three points and a lead in this showcase event. Make sure you time your run. Hartbury through Naomi Brennan. Looking to run it straight back from the kickoff and into contact there goes McQueen in that distinctive blue headgear. Gold takes it into contact, and now they look to release the back line. Cutting inside goes Nell Metcalf. Metcalf, oh, well met by her opposite number, Evie Walker. The two fullbacks going head to head. She's not in the way. They're going to be a matchup to pay real attention to this morning. Harper has spread the ball right to the other side of the field. Half spilled, but then on the charge, Lola Whitley. Lola Whitley making good ground. Now they go wide into the hands of Constable. Constable's taken down. There were players over on the right-hand side. 
Exeter College do well to get around. That's a great tackle on Gwena Hopkins. Now Metcalf, can she get across the line? No, held short. Hartbury looked to go direct, but it's great defending by Exeter College. Referees playing advantage to Hartbury. Exeter doing a great job of keeping him out. And eventually force the error, but will come back for the penalty. Well, that is absolutely superb defence from Exeter College to keep Hartbury out. Can they keep it up? Out they go to Hopkins, charging towards the line, but again well met. This short extra defence is fantastic, but there are numbers left now if Hartbury can get the ball to them, and they do that. <laughs> Nell Matthews gets across the line. It was her break that set up the attacking position, and it's Matthews that finishes things off. They battered around the Exeter College try line. Hopkins with that huge carry, it sucks in eight, nine defenders there all around the ruck and then it's simple hands from Gould to Burtonshaw out to Matthews, to Metcalf rather, and Metcalf finishes in the corner. To give her side an 8-0 lead and Burtonshaw will look to add the extras from a tough angle. Clean strike, but doesn't quite have the legs. So it's Hartbury College 8, Exeter College 0. And this game, not yet seven minutes old. Fantastic start from Hartbury College. An absolute institution of youth rugby success on the Gloucester side. They are looking to make a mark. In this, the first occasion of this sort, talking to a few of the officials that organised it, and they are really looking to ramp this up over the next few years. As Sophie McQueen gets on the attack. Hartbury College keen to attack from absolutely anywhere. In carries Hopkins again. Already I think we're seeing that Hopkins is going to be doing an awful lot of heavy lifting Thank you so for Hartbury much. College. Burtonshaw playing as a real second receiver for Hartbury and they go charging down the left wing. Tilly Smale on that left hand side. But already we talked about that Hartbury College back row and McQueen and Hopkins in particular carrying with real menace at the start of this game. There's a long trots to the line out, the third member of that back row, Hannah Kibble. Next to College though, this is a good attacking platform. Get the line out. Not quite straight though. We'll have a free kick, Hartbury College. Shout out, by the way, to uh, one of today's photographers, Nick B. Images. He's very kindly provided us with uh, a huge number of images all season long. You go and check out Nick B. Images, because he'll have some shots from today's game. McQueen gets the ball out, tidied up nicely by Naomi Brennan. And in goes Kibble. First big carry for her, the third member of that back row trio. And she makes good ground as well. Keris Gold releasing the background. And now down the left-hand side goes Tilly Smale. Well tackled over there on the far side. And it is all Hartbury College at the moment. 
And I know to those on the outside, you might think, well, it's Hartbury College, of course, it's all Hartbury College. But let me tell you, these sides are pretty evenly matched. Seven England under 18s in the Hartbury squad, and five in the Exeter College squad. So it's not like we're looking at two sides of hugely different abilities. Hartbury just looking incredibly powerful in the opening period of the game. And Exeter College have spilled it, so Hartbury will get back on the attack once again through Hopkins, who gets the offload away. Now McQueen again on the charge. Gould feeds her forward pack. Whitley takes that one in. Back into the hands of Gould. The space again out wide. And again, Matthews out to Smale. Well, it was almost a repeat of the first try, wasn't it? Gould to Burtonshaw to Metcalf. And this time, Metcalf, she could have gone herself, but unselfishly, she gave it to Smale. Although, the referees called it as a forward pass. There I was in all my excitement for Smale. Praising Metcalf for giving the ball, and I take it all back. Should have held on to it. Nell, dearie me. see here Gould feeds it on to Whitley he takes it in tight and there's just loads of space out wide here through the hands Burtonshaw Metcalf and that ball just a judge to have gone forwards to Smale strong shove from Hartbury at the scrum but I think Exeter College had just tidied it up at the back and now the referee says we've gone round 90 so we'll put the ball in again Big battle to watch in the front row. Hannah Sams on the loose head side for Exeter College up against Olivia Constable. Uh, sorry, yeah, up against Kira Leet on the tight head side for Hartbury College. Those two very familiar with one another. That contest should be very exciting. Looks like Leet just getting the upper hand on this scrum, but it's steady enough for Exeter College to be able to get the ball away. It's a lovely offload from Danny Priest. And the space here is that, no, nope, knocked forward. And it is so difficult early on here for Exeter College to escape their 22. Been under all kinds of pressure. It was a great offload from Danny Priest. But the ball just a bit too far in front of Cat Walker. Spills out of her control. So we have a scrum Hartbury College, and this is a fantastic platform. Little more than five meters out on the right hand side, plenty of space for that right hand wheel. They've split the backs, three on the left, three on the right. And if Leet can get that right shoulder going, don't be surprised if you see Hopkins pick this up at the base working in tandem with Ryle at nine. And then outside her, she's going to have Burtonshaw, Metcalf and Matthews all ready to go. Instead, we get the penalty. Ryle looked to go fast, but not quite from the mark. So instead, I think she's going to invite a few of her forwards to have a bash. Tess White has the first charge. McQueen, oh, she is a, such a strong carrier. There's the open side. They're across the line, but held up. We'll have a goal line dropout. Well, in the build up to the first try, we saw how good that extra college defense is in that tight situation. And once again, they proved that, managing to hold the ball up across the line. Important here to get a good clearance kick. Womack looking for touch, doesn't quite catch it as she'd have wanted though, so Matthews will have a little go. Great defensive tackle from Cat Walker. And intercepted, and Matthews will have a chance to go. 
Womack rather will have a chance to go. Next to college, can they string together a bit of possession? They've struggled to get their phases going and they'll struggle again because over the ball, Olivia Constable, the Hartbury College hooker, with another turnover. They have been so efficient on the deck of Hartbury College. The game only 15 minutes old, but already it feels like we have a pattern that if Exeter College go anywhere near contact without support, Hartbury College are going to be all over it. Burtonshaw takes it in this time. She's been looking to distribute as often as she possibly can. McQueen, yet another carry. How much work is she getting through in the early part of this game? Untidy ball. So help we just take this one to deck. Ryle has a go around the fringes. And the charge goes Whitley. Help we go to Matthews, but the ball just spilled. So the referee brings us back for a penalty. And this pressure from Hartbury College is just relentless. 8-0 they lead, a try to the good. Plus that Burtonshaw penalty. I think the ref's just going to have a word with Daisy Womack about the penalty count here from Exeter College. To the corner they go. Will we see Hartbury College have a bit of a rumble? I think there's a fair chance we might. Good crowd here at Walsall, RFC, for this game. Gathered by Hartbury College. The ball is absolutely on the charge. I think on the ball is Olivia Constable. And across the line, she goes. The ball went left. Constable went right. The whole defence was thrown by the direction the ball was travelling. And I don't think anyone had quite, re quite realised that Constable had got herself on the ball. We see them all here and immediately they get on the charge there. We see Constable getting on the ball and the ball goes charging left and there she goes. I'll just carry on straight. Thank you very much. Try time for me. Burton Shaw to convert. Looking to put her side. More than two converted tries ahead. Catches it clean. Will it come round? It does indeed. And Burtonshaw puts Hartbury College 15 0 up here against Exeter College in this women's under 18 showcase event here at Warsaw RFC. A reminder to stay with us through the day at 2 30 p.m. We've got the men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup final between Hereford Sixth Form College and USP College from Essex. Here, though, in the women's showcase, Hartbury College are on absolute fire early on. And Naomi Brennan's going to look to return this kickoff the way they've been returning everything so far, and that is through running hard at the Exeter College defence. Constable, buoyed by that try, makes good ground. Now Gould gets things a bit wider. The offload game going just spilled that time. So a chance for Cat Walker to have an attack. Can Exeter College string some phases together? They've struggled to so far. We know they've got talent if they can, though. But again, over the ball, McQueen. This time it's just spilled forward, I think, so we'll have an Exeter scrum, but 
Sophie McQueen is just everywhere at the moment. On that ball like an absolute limpet. We see here, she just tracks it back and like a classic open side, she's right there on the ball. I think the lesson we're learning early in this game is if you're taking it into contact, make sure that McQueen is a long, long way away from the ball. Huge scrum from Hartbury College. Exeter just about get it away, but it's tough ball for them to deal with. And already they've lost 15 metres. And Hartbury have gone charging through. But they pick up the ball, and that was a ruck formed. Unfortunate one that for Naomi Brennan. I think it's difficult, isn't it, when you get over the ball on a counter ruck like that. The temptation to pick it up is irresistible. But it was a ruck. Exeter College on the charge. Good running there, Danny Priest. Oh, but the referee calls it back for a bit of crossing. Well, she made good grounded Priest. But illegally so in the eyes of the referee. So it's a heartbreak penalty. And into touch from Keris Gold. As we see here, Priest darts inside and yet just blocking off the tackle from Burtonshaw was her opposite number, Jess Phillips. So it's another line out to Hartbury College. We saw what they did from the last one closer to the try line. Will they opt for them all again? Well, we'll have to wait just a second. Because the referee's going to pull us back. Gone are the glorious sunny climbs of Rosslyn Park and day one at the Sedba Tens. We are back into the midst of winter rugby here at Warsaw RFC. Montbury College. With the line out stolen by Exeter College, turnover ball for them. Great work in the air from Ellie Wood. This Hartbury College defense is just irrepressible and turned over it was by Lola Whitley, one handed it was as well. Scooped it back, went charging around the blind side. And the high tackle means a penalty. Hartbury College that was outstanding from Lola Whitley. The one-handed poach. She must have mitts the size of Michael Jordan to pluck that one out. Line out Hartbury, six metres out. Well, from almost the exact same position, Olivia Constable scored their second try of the game. And they set up to do the same, but instead they charge off to the left through Hopkins, hauled down just short. The call comes out, Burtonshaw, well tackled. And this is where we've seen Exeter College look comfortable. And again, looking comfortable, that fringe defence of theirs so good and this time they get the turnover as well and I think they're going to have a little run certainly shaping up that way well I told you as a feature of the women's game at this level was grand ambition from all areas and we're going to see that from Exeter College Hartbury College defence is up so fast though, but there's a bit of space for Jess Phillips, I think it is. Up almost to the 22 and earns her side a penalty because so eager were Hartbury College to slow down that attack that they've infringed from the side. 
And now we start to see what Exeter College can do. And we come back for an offside penalty because guess what? Sophie McQueen had got herself over that ball. So we come back. Hartbury College were offside. And this time, Daisy Womack, the skipper, will look to the touchline. Takes the ball up almost to the halfway line. Touch judge on the far side there, by the way, Casey Allen did the full week at the Rosslyn Park HSBC National School Sevens. Been a busy period for referees as well as players of late. My team carefully reminding me that it's also been a very busy period for streaming services and broadcasters. Ain't that the truth? And here go Exeter College. Evie Walker making ground. Can she break down this right hand side, this left hand side? Cuts back inside and gets the offload away. But the offload is forward. And from such a promising position, Exeter College lose possession. We're just gonna have a pause. Well, a few injuries get patched up, but we see here Evie Walker, the first real time that Exeter College have had a chance to stretch their legs and look at the ground they can make. It was a great offload, but I think the ball was spilled on the floor. I think that's what the referee was signaling there. Well, we said that battle between Nell Metcalf and Evie Walker, the two fullbacks, was going to be one to watch. We saw it early on, and then we've seen here the running prowess of Walker from fullback. Signs of hope for Exeter College. It's been a tough, tough opening. Hartbury have been so clinical and so powerful. And Exeter College, if they can get a few phases of attack together like that, those confidence levels will begin to increase. Lovely setup here at Walsall RFC. The artificial surface, one of those that was built and paid for by the RFU during the 2015 World Cup as part of the, uh, the legacy program there. Had a wander around the clubhouse earlier to learn a bit of the history of the place. Some fantastic former internationals that have uh, played here. Rupert Moon for Wales, former Wales captain Colin Charvis, Jan Webster for England. And one for uh, one of our team at Next Gen 15, Richard Jackson. An England deaf international, Craig Pothicary. Hartbury look to go unsurprisingly from their own 22 but well dealt with by Exeter College as they bunder Mathindle Ryle, Mathindle Ryle into touch. The ambition from both sides to play from absolutely anywhere is awesome to see. Rugby from the Russell Earnshaw School of Thought. Exeter College. Tap it in. It's tapped back rather than gathered. Bouncing ball. Puts the girls' champions at Rosslyn Park on the back foot a little bit. They do manage to get it out to Priest, and Priest is a dangerous runner, we've seen. Get their offloads going down this right-hand side, cutting back in, comes Grizzle Johnson. This is better from Exeter College, stringing together the phases, getting support players there, great offload once again. 
now on the front foot. Can they find a bit of space on the charge? Hannah Sams. Superb player is Sams. Womack goes down the blind side. And I think we're going to have another penalty for offside from Hartbury College. And the referee's just going to have a little word with the skipper, Naomi Brennan. That's two or three now for offside. Another little break, and it's Sophie McQueen that's just having a few running repairs. Hopefully, just getting patched up, because it would be a huge shame to lose her. She has been such a dominant figure in the opening 28, 29 minutes of the game. Back underway, and it's going to be a quick tap from Exeter College. Hannah Sams takes the first carry through the hands of Womack. And again, we see that offloading game. The offloads, superb from Exeter College. And this is as close as they've been to the Hartbury College try line, isn't it? What can they do from this position? Well, they're on the front foot, but look who's over it again. It's McQueen. And I think McQueen was legal, but I think we are going to get a callback once again for offside. The referee is going to have a word with Brennan and with Amelia Williams, who goes to the bin. I think that's just for multiple team offences on offside. This aggressive Hartbury College defence just coming up a bit too fast, a bit too consistently. But Exeter College have suddenly found themselves a bit of momentum. And Hannah Sams is going to go charging towards the try line from this penalty. She's across the line, is she? No, just held short. So Exeter will go digging around for it. They've got another penalty coming. It's slow ball, but it's advantage. It's a free play. Round to the right-hand side they go. Just held short again. Out to the right-hand side. Stepping back inside goes Grizzle Johnson. Five metres short now. Exeter College and the ball spilled. But I think we're going to come back for that penalty. Right beneath the posts. And once again, Sams is going to carry, and Sams gets it up towards the try line. She's over it this time, is she? But is she held up? Held up, she is. Goal line dropout, Hartbury College survive that moment, but that should give Exeter College huge confidence. Their first real spell of possession in the game, and they got themselves across the whitewash. And they're going to have another opportunity here as Womack collects the goal line dropout. Through the hands they try and go. Carried by Priest, but she's well met in defence. And it's a penalty to Hartbury College. Once again, their prowess on the deck. Making such a difference for them. We are seeing here that you simply cannot afford to take on this Hartbury College side without getting your support in early. 
And that was the left wing, Tilly Smale getting over the ball. All court game from the Hartbury College players. One of the smallest players on the pitch, Tilly Smale. Stepping in off the wing, getting over the ball and earning her side the penalty and an attacking position. McQueen once again having a few running repairs. Never a, never a more number seven like performance has there been really, has there? Carrying hard, turning just about everything over. And in between times, just having the body welded back together. Promising times though for Exeter College. After being on, on the back foot for the best part of half an hour. They got themselves their first real attacking opportunity and though they didn't score the try, they know now that they can cause Hartbury College problems. A little wonder, I mean, the way they've carved up through much of this season, we know that they can attack with real vigor. I mean, just to give you a flavor of some of their results, 32-10, 75-54-24, .54, and 61-0. This is a team that can score points. Mind you, so can Hartbury. They're four games leading up to this. They cross 40 point mark in all four. And as I mentioned earlier, conceded ju just the two tries. So uh, unsurprisingly in this showcase event, two very, very good teams and a very, very good Hartbury College Mall. And they play with penalty advantage and they've made 10 yards already from the Mall. Into the hands of Burtonshaw, who does the dirty work of taking the charge through the middle. Just getting away with a bit of a spillage there as well. So a team stay in possession. McQueen calling for the ball. In the end, I think the referee has picked up on that spillage. So we come back for the penalty from that huge maul from Hartbury College. Absolutely charged forward, about 10 or 15 metres. And Keris Gold sticks the ball into the corner. Well, if you're Hartbury College, surely, surely you set up for another maul here. Such has been the success they've had with it up to this point. Down to only seven in the pack as well, remember. This time pinched by Exeter College. The second time they've done that this game. They've been getting up really well in the air. We've come back for an infringement. I think might be knocked on, in fact, in the line out by Hartbury College. And with Amelia Williams in the bin, I think that might mean we see a couple of changes for Hartbury College just to uh, make sure they've got the requisite front row. And indeed they have. The changes in the front row. Just six in the back line. It's Betty Matthews who's the misfortune of having to have a little bit of a rest. The wind here in Warsaw has picked up somewhat. We've been hoping the rain might stay away, but that wind might be what's carrying it over. Let's hope not, hey? Lily Plowman picks up off the base around the right hand side. Chance for Exeter to build through the possession. Well, they get another penalty. They consistently be going to Hannah Sams to get on the charge from these penalties. Will they do that again? No, I think that Womack's going to try and set up some field position here. It's 
Stabs it forward up to round about the 10 meter line. You see there is McQueen over the ball this time. I think McQueen was fine. I think it was the slow roll from the tackler that was the problem. Sophie McQueen too fast even for her own teammates good when it comes to the ball being on the deck. to win the line out. It's tapped down. So Waymack releases the back line. Priest out to Catwalker. Ball just spilled, but stays in Exeter College hands. So Priest just sets things up again. Takes the ball to ground. Waymack feeds the forward pack. Plowman takes it into contact. Oh, McQueen's over it again, is she? No, bounces out. I will try and stop going on about Sophie McQueen, but her work so far has been absolutely astonishing. Josie Plant takes it into contact this time. Slow ball for Womack. But Priest cuts back inside and makes good ground. Front foot ball for Exeter College. They're short of a scrum half though at the moment. That quick ball will become slightly slower ball. Oh, this Hartbury College defence is up so fast on these Exeter women. The wind is uh, fierce at the moment, has to be said. Ball stabbed through but tidied up by Metcalf. I think we're going to see our first box kick of the game. Indeed we are. Ryle hoists it up in the air. And the ball is bouncing and bobbling everywhere. Something you've got to watch out for on these 4G surfaces is the height the ball carries on the bounce. We are blowing a gale here at Walsall RFC. I don't know if you can see it on the flags on your screens, but it's straight down the pitch from left to right behind Hartbury College. So don't be surprised if that box kick is the first of a few to come because this sudden wind has the potential to become a huge factor in the game. Ryle stands at nine, out to gold on the blind side. She's brought to deck nicely. They go short, back on the open side to Leet. But Exeter College get themselves over the ball. Line out next to college from that penalty. Can they bring this one safely down? They've been tapping them off the top. It's just been a bit scrappy. And again, it's a little scrappy, so it's stolen by Hartbury College, who will look to run, that's for sure. Oh, Hopkins. What a ball carrier she is. Flies across the game line. Now they get it into the, the hands of McQueen. Difficult one to take, but... She brings the ball to ground safely. And the referee's playing advantage to Hartbury College, I think. That's cutting through. Goes Naomi Brennan, the skipper. Now Metcalf. She makes ground as well. Hartbury College on the front foot. McQueen now takes it into contact. She's brought down well. 
I think there by Plowman. Through though goes Metcalf. Metcalf chips it over the top. It's a race towards the post. Ball bounces back off the post and it's covered well by Cat Walker. Oh, that was perilous for Exeter College. There is nothing more terrifying than running back towards your own try line with a loose ball stabbed through and then it comes off the post protector. Anything can happen. We see here Metcalf, incisive break and then the ball over the top, off the post protector. Well, Cat Walker, along with the other 14 Exeter College players, heart in mouth at that moment. And I think she's winded herself in diving down on it. Oh, those are horrible moments for anyone, any black, any back three player. We'll recognize the terror in that moment. And I think we must be pretty much approaching half time. Our clock, of course, only indicative, but uh, this is an under 18 game, so 35 minute halves. It's a fairly safe bet to assume that we're going to be uh, tying things up for the second half, for the first half rather, fairly shortly. Certainly a few people on the touchline that are eager to uh, pop in for a couple of minutes and warm up. I can see a few jogging on the spot. Temperature has dropped rapidly with this wind coming in. Not that Hartbury College will be too worried. They're 15-0 up. It was an electric start from them. An early penalty followed by an early try. And it wasn't too long until the second score came either for a 15-0 lead. In this women's under-18 showcase event, as I mentioned earlier, two champions from the recent Rosson Park HSBC National School Sevens, Hartbury College winning the girls' ASA competition, Exeter College winning the girls' under-18 competition. We might have a few more players on the field on this one, but believe you me, there is plenty of resonance from those Rosson Park games. We're back underway, though. Goal line dropout, Womack gets it out. Ball just bundles into touch. Will that be half time? No. Doesn't look like it. We're getting close to setting records here for the uh, longest, longest half of under 18s rugby I've seen. We're on just about 50 minutes in real time. Exeter College come away with the ball from the line out, but it's spilled in contact. Goes backwards though, so they'll look to play. Can they take advantage of this extraordinarily long half of rugby? Womack gets the ball through the hands. Out to Walker, glad to see she's recovered. I'll take it back, it wasn't Walker, but I am glad to see the Walker has recovered. It was the other Walker, Evie Walker took the ball into contact there. And another penalty to Exeter College. Well, I've seen the referee have a look at her watch. But we're not going to end yet because Exeter College are going to play. No, they don't. They tap it out. Oh, they were going to look to get that to touch, but the wind took that off the foot of Womack slightly. So it didn't make touch, so Hartbury College will press for a third. This is the final play of the half. Ryle feeds Gould, feeds McQueen, out to Burtonshaw. Now to the skipper, Brennan. Out on the left wing to Tilly Smale. Tilly Smale gets across the line and Hartbury College pounce on that opportunity to finish the half with their third try of the game. They seized on that clearing kick, not making touch, knew it was the final play, thought, well, let's have a go. McQueen out to Burtonshaw, the skipper Brennan takes it, draws beautifully, gives it out to Smale. And that is a 
superb bit of finishing from Tilly Smale. Great strength. We've already seen what strength she has with that turnover earlier on, but with three girls on her on that left-hand touch line, she managed to find a way to wriggle free and across the line to give her team a 20 points to nil lead at half time. It could yet be more with the Burtonshaw conversion to come. Conversion won't quite have the legs, so that will be it at half time. Hartbury College lead in this girls under 18 showcase event, 20 points to nil against Exeter College. What a finish to the half. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home, School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Return to Play is the UK's leading sports medicine provider for schools and clubs. We ensure sport is safer than ever by making it easy for you to provide gold standard medical care to your players. Our head injury and concussion care service provides your players with seven day a week access to some of the UK's most experienced concussion doctors who make sure the correct diagnosis is made and manage each player's recovery until they are fit to return to sport. We also provide you with the education, policy and administrative support you need to confidently manage injuries, giving you and your players' parents peace of mind. Using our innovative R2P injury management system, injuries can be quickly recorded, parents and staff automatically notified, doctor appointments booked, players' recovery tracked and injury analysis downloaded. Our system even integrates with other school systems, saving you admin time. Our full sports medicine service is tailored to your organization's specific needs, designed to best support your sports program and medical setup. It includes our head injury and concussion care service, plus weekly sports doctor clinics, access to physiotherapists, match day medical support and more. Return to Play are partnered with over 60 of the UK's leading schools and clubs. Get in touch to find out more.
Well, you join us again for the second half. Hartbury College leading 20 points to nil here against Exeter College. And they try to return that kickoff in their typical fashion, running and charging towards the try line, but bundled out into touch. Our Hartbury College. And so Exeter College will have the line out. Very unlucky to be three point uh, to be three tries down rather. The very final play of a very long half resulted in a Hartbury College try, but could they return with the, one of the first plays of the first half of the second half rather? with a try of their own. Exeter College, look at the depth on this attack. Okay, charging into the hands of Womack. Brought down brilliantly by Hartbury College into the number eight. Plowman charges through. Well, that's one way of getting McQueen out of the game, isn't it? Force her to make the tackle. Through they go this time, through the blind side and vice captain Bella Hartley. Exeter College, well, we saw them get close in the first half. And they're close here in the second half. Penalty, and it's from these positions that we saw Hannah Sams going in the first half, and it's Hannah Sams on the carry here in the second half. Hartbury College, I think, have held her up, but they've done so illegally. So the referee is playing advantage to Exeter College and across the line they go and what a way to start this second half from Exeter College I've got a feeling it might have been Millie Twig that got herself across the line or is it Plowman that's getting the pats on the back either way it was superb tight work from Exeter College we see them Looks like the attack stalled, but they do get the ball to ground. And then burrowing away they go, and it is Plowman that picks it up and powers across the line for their first try of the game. What a way to start the second half for Exeter College. It was a first half fast start from Hartbury College that allowed them their platform. And now, as Clara Grizzle Johnson bangs over the conversion, it's a fast start from Exeter College that might give them momentum in this second half. And with that wind, as we said, blowing straight down the field from left to right, now behind Exeter College, perhaps that may well play in their favor. Onto the field, by the way, is Jess Stokes for Hartbury College. She's taking the kickoff and drops down into the backfield from that restart. Exeter College will look to play, and with their tails up, they go charging into contact. Fantastic carry. Womack, little delay on the pass, doesn't quite go to hand, but it's recovered, or nearly recovered by Sam's referee says, there was a knock-on on the way, though. Also on the field for Hartbury College, Serene Webster, wearing number 20. She's come on at scrum half. Been a fair bit of shuffling in the Hartbury College ranks. <laughs> and indeed Exeter College. Millie Twig on at scrum half for them. 16 on our team sheets, but wearing 20, and it's Twig that gets the ball away from the scrum, but the referee pulls it back. We'll be resetting after a bit of a collapse there.
Twig then. Whips the ball away from the base of the scrum. Womack standing at 12 off that particular play so that they can get her hands distributing the ball slightly wider. And well, they might because they've made great ground from that. Twig onto Plowman, I think it was on the carry. The try scorer. He's carried well all morning for Exeter College. But the ball is spilled and it's away to the try scorer on the left wing. Smale, but she's well dealt with by Grizzle Johnson. Ball retained by Hartbury College though. McQueen gets on the charge, but it's turned over. The turnover specialist turned over in return and I think Molly Thomas got herself over that one for Exeter Chiefs. And there is a real sense of confidence about this Chiefs side now. Sams will carry and carries well across the game line. Ripped away on the floor, but I think that's going to be a penalty and it is. An eager move from Dally Hopkins, but with a team of three on the field, never quite likely to get away with that one. That's why I like playing my rugby at a nice low level, just a ref. Get away with all sorts on the dark side of the ref. We see here the huge carry from Sam's. Gets the ball to deck. And Hopkins, well, she just can't resist, can she? A little pause here for a few running repairs to Tess White. I think she's okay. She looks as though she was just taking, uh, taking a bit of strapping off. Stretching the old quad out. Good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that so far the rain has held off. The temperatures have dropped, the wind has come in. But touch wood, we remain dry. And we also remain with an absolutely cracking game on our hands. Hartbury College exploded out the blocks in the first half and then finished it off in style too with a third try but Exeter College have come out firing in the second half. Scoring early on through their number eight Lily Plowman and having some real possession in these early exchanges in the second half. Womack feeds Sam. Sam's has carried an awful lot and in, is carrying increasingly so as this game goes on. That one's a little loose though. And ends up due to the confusion caused by the bouncing ball with offside being called against Exeter College. So Hartbury College get on the front foot and McQueen Feeds it out wide towards Chelsea Matthews. Now they come back the other way to Hartbury College. Hopkins gathering that one nicely and taking it in. Out now they go to Leah Bra. Searching for their fourth try. Hartbury College. This close range defense has been a key feature of Exeter College though. What it does mean though is that there is space both left and right for Hartbury College should they choose to go there. They go right into the hands of Burtonshaw. She's well dealt with as well though. Still though there are numbers left but they don't need them because they've gone over in the tight breaching that Exeter College defense. Four tries to Hartbury College. It 
shipped it out to the right hand side. Burtonshaw was well tackled, got herself to within inches of the try line though. And then over the ball, they went and just, just clipping the line for their fourth try of the afternoon were Hartbury College. Couldn't quite make out who it was that managed to cross there. Such was the forest of bodies that had to be dug through to get that one over. The conversion is good though. How about that? Touchline conversion from Hartbury College gives them a 27 points to seven lead and having been all Exeter College at the start of this second half, Hartbury College responded brilliantly. It's Leah Bruff, I think, who got that conversion, by the way. An absolute blinder from the right-hand touchline. changes again our Hartbury College well they brought on Hopkins earlier after the Williams yellow card so Williams now returns half game rule in operation of course so doing what they can to ensure that absolutely everyone gets half a game out here all spilled on the kickoff but goes backwards and Smale will have a carry but she's met by a ferocious tackle from Plowman who is having a massive game, as is Sams, who makes another tackle herself. The Exeter College defence is looking more organised and more excited about defence than in the first half, getting off the line really nicely. Hartbury College carrying through Leet. Looking out to the back line now, getting the offload away. Almost gathered behind the back there by Gwen and Hopkins. In the end, it spilled forward, but that was nearly a wonderful bit of skill under pressure from Hopkins. Scrum Exeter College. I do apologise for the wind that's absolutely flying around here. Be put in by Millie Twig. Penalty though, Hartbury College. They go on the charge. Williams just returns the action and absolutely keen for it. She bursts through on the charge. Leet plays the pivot role. Through they go. Big carry from Hopkins. Gets the offload away as well, but doesn't go to hand, so Exeter College had the chance to counter. Jess Phillips makes good ground. Womack, blind pass out to the forwards on her right shoulder. But over the ball at Hartbury College. Ellie Morrill. Gets herself over the ball. That was outstanding. And the kick. And Bruff makes touch after a fashion, but look at this. Early moral. They have been so quick over the ball today, Hartbury College. So, so quick. And we've seen it from so many players as well, forwards and backs 
Remember that Tilly Smale turnover midway through the first half. Ball goes to the middle, not straight though. That's that wind having a real impact. A reminder, coming up after this one, 2.30 p.m., so there's time for you to have a bit of lunch and a bit of a cup of tea or whatever you need. 2.30 p.m., the men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup Final. Hereford Sixth Form College against USP College. The west of the country meets the east. It's an all Western affair here in the women's under 18 showcase game though. Artbury College leading 27-7 against Exeter College. Exeter College on the left hand side of your screens in the blue and white hoops. And the red and black on the right hand side, Artbury College. Womack feeds Grizzle Johnson who gets it out one more to fullback Evie Walker. We saw some electrifying runs from Evie Walker in the first half. As Plowman again storms over the game line. She's been a real standout for Exeter College. There's Lily Plowman. But again the ball spilled and Smale pounces on it. But offside Hartbury College, danger averted for Exeter College. Bit of a debate in the Exeter ranks as to what to do. In the end, they settle for the old faithful, Hannah Sams, to carry it into contact and across the game line she goes straight away. But it's spilled in midfield, so Hartbury College turn it over and will have a chance to counter-attack. Already scored one in this second half. Could they get another here? Next to College defence is up well, but it's away brilliantly. Fantastic handling from Leet to her front row colleague, Williams. Quick ball for Hartbury College. Leet gets on it again. Murrell takes it into contact. Kibble now gets across the 22. Penalty, Hartbury College. They thought about going quick through Sarah and Webster. But instead, it's going to be the boot of Bruff, I think, to the corner. A wobbly old kick, but it does the job. Puts Hartbury College in the corner. We've seen them score a try from this kind of position before. As we see here, Kibble taking that ball into contact. And in their eagerness to try and regain possession, Exeter College getting their hands on the ball in the ruck. A bit of chatter ahead of this line out. We're going to have a little bit more as the referee makes sure that everyone is actually involved who should be. And indeed not involved who shouldn't be. Not straight though. So we'll have a scrum down. Treacherous, treacherous times to be a hooker. The wind is absolutely flying down this pitch. Making it oh so difficult to get that ball straight. It'll be an extra college scrum and look out for the potential of Plowman taking advantage of this blind side here with Tilly Smale in the backfield covering the kick. There is space for Plowman should she choose to use it. Instead, though, they play open to Womack. Get 
takes the ball to Priest, who makes decent ground and they keep it alive through the hands. Womack gets a second touch. Kibble has got across brilliantly though from her flank to make the tackle on this right hand touch line. Two phases from one side of the pitch to the other. The Hartbury College back rower. Exeter College playing with advantage at the moment though. Can they take advantage? They switch the play. They were looking to go right originally, but they come back to the left-hand side. And a good decision too. They make good ground. Forwards here. Break down the right-hand side. And down that right-hand side, they'll continue. And through the gap goes Walker. Walker, well, we saw what she could do in the first half. And we're seeing it again in the second. Referee judges that she was held in the tackle as she bounced back to her feet when she was brought down. So it's a penalty, Hartbury College. Oh, they're so tough, those ones. When you're not quite sure if you can feel the tackle is still on you. Clearance kick doesn't quite make touch, but the bounce is favourable and does make it, as we see here, Evie Walker down the right hand side she steps in field it's a good tackle from Betty Matthews and the referee judges that Walker was just held on the floor there as she bounced back to her feet and again a bit of a delay ahead of this line out as Hartbury College make a change Back onto the field comes Danny Hopkins. I think we've uh, got a full complement of players now. We're just waiting for uh, everyone to decide they want to play a bit of rugby. A long conference here between the Hartbury College under 18s. And uh, they seem to have decided upon it. Whatever it was. Line out. Spilled forward in the air. Well, as we keep saying, it's so tricky at the line out. That's the last three or four now we've seen. Not quite firing, no one's fault. Just incredibly challenging conditions. Free kick, Exeter College, Hartbury College. A bit too eager to get that scrum going. Womack. Looks as though she's going to look for touches, she. I think the trouble is that Hannah Sams is having a rest, is she? So Womack, a centre field kick. Gives Betty Matthews a chance to counter. She ships it out to her skipper, Naomi Brennan. Gets it back from her now, down the right hand side. Webster out to Leet. Leet into contact. Good handling this from Hartbury College. Williams moves it on one to Chelsea Matthews. He's well brought down. Hartbury are creating some unbelievably quick ball here at Walsall RFC. Good hands from Jess Stokes to hold on to that one. But in the end, as she moved it wide, it's then spilled. So we'll have another scrum. Things a tiny bit scrappy out here. Cold hands playing a part.
McClellan picks it up from the base. Another huge carry from her. Gets her team on the front foot. Now Womack on at pace comes Davis Priest. Danny Priest, rather, almost up to the try line. Goes Priest, Plowman and Priest working in brilliant tandem together. Now Walker. She's across the try line and the try is awarded. Exeter College. What a world work try that was. And Evie Walker is rewarded for some fantastic rugby through this game with her side's second try. First it was Plowman with the carry off the scrum and then Priest got all the way up to about a yard short. Ball to Plowman, she just goes on the outside between the two defenders and across the try line. Next to College of their second score of the game. Grizzle Johnson over the conversion. She landed a superb one earlier. How can she do with this one? A tough, tough angle. It's a clean strike, but just a little skew to the left. So it's Hartbury College 27, Exeter College 12. They've narrowed the gap a little bit. Have Exeter College who have stepped up massively in this second half with the win behind them. Round about 10 minutes left, although the first half lasted closer to an hour than it did to 35 minutes. So uh, we'll see exactly how long is left. Exeter College returning the kickoff with interest. Walker, electric after that try. And it's fast handling from Exeter College. And a good clear out, is it? No. Over the ball, got this Tilly Smale again. The diminutive left wing with her second turnover of the match to go alongside her try. What a game she's having. Kick doesn't make touch though, so Exeter College have a chance to counter attack. There's Gemma Cadle, the open side, covering that on the right wing. Like any good open side, spotting where the gaps need to be plugged, but it's turned over by Hartbury College. Kibble takes it into contact. And now Hopkins. A little stab through from Jess Stokes. There's space in behind, is there? No, covered by Evie Walker. But Stokes knew what she was doing. She was playing with advantage as Exeter College crept offside. So a shot to nothing. She stabbed the ball in behind. But the excellent Evie Walker was there to cover. Hartbury College pump it into the right hand side. Well, it was from this exact position in reverse that they scored their second try of the game. Olivia Constable, the hooker, getting that one. Chelsea Matthews in at hooker for this one. Can she follow suit? Messy line out again, though, sadly. That win playing havoc. Out there. So we will have a scrum. Exeter College. Bit of a stop start second half it's been. No doubt some chilly fingertips playing their part in that. Ball at the base of the scrum. Referee calls on Hartbury College to hold. 
as Exeter College looked to play from outside their own half. Womack got on the outside and now Walker makes a bit of ground out to Grizzle Johnson. Oh, lovely step that was from Grizzle Johnson. And Womack gets a second touch of the face, as does Grizzle Johnson. Multiple touches so often cause trouble, but the spillage comes at the breakdown. And after all that exciting endeavor from Exeter College, it'll be Possession Hartbury College. We see here Grizzle Johnson takes it in and it's superb work from Kibble actually, isn't it? Over the, over the ball that causes that spillage in the end. She has stepped up hugely in the second half, Kibble. It was her back row colleagues, Hopkins and McQueen, that all the talk was about in the first half. But in this second half, Kibble has been absolutely everywhere. Packing down now at number eight is Kibble. Hartbury College have really shuffled things up in the pack. I think I've spotted Amelia Williams in the second row. She started on the loose head. Ball turned over though, at the scrum by Exeter College. So they'll come away with the ball. I think just in at the side there, in trying to steal that, came Hartbury College. And after a little bit of disagreement with that decision, they're gonna get marched back 10. So Exeter College almost up to the halfway line. We've seen a lot more of that this season, haven't we? Began with Luke Pierce marching Billy Vunapola back twice back in a Premiership, Gallagher Premiership game. And um, we've seen that filter down through the age grade since. It was almost a lost, uh, a lost weapon in the referee's armory was the marching back 10. But back in vogue this season, and rightly so. Ball came in, but referee unhappy with the gap. Haven't heard a fresh call, so I reckon this is going to the front. And indeed it is. Clean ball though. For Exeter College, Womack feeds it out to Priest, who played such a key role in that second try, and then she gives it on to Walker, the try scorer. Into the 22 they go. Exeter College, what a huge difference from first half to second half for them, but one difference, well, I was going to say one difference that hasn't changed is Hartbury put College's prowess over the ball at the ruck. But in fact, it was illegally done. So we'll have an extra College penalty. And that familiar routine, Hannah Sams with the tap and go. You get the sense she rather enjoys those tap and go penalties, does Hannah Sams. Plowman, well, she just enjoys any kind of carry, doesn't she? Now the backs have a go. And Priest goes darting through. Looks for the offload. No one quite there for her. So she goes to deck. Now out to Grizzle Johnson. Grizzle Johnson steps back inside. Ball safely back. Cadle. This time takes it on. Out now, fast hands. Womack to Priest. Priest out to Plowman. Plowman crosses the line. Back to back tries for Exeter College. From 20 0 down, they've clawed their way back to 27 17. And it was great handling through the forwards, out to the backs. Priest with the late pass out to Plowman. Well, those two played a huge role in the previous try. 
And it's another big role in this third try. Lily Plowman is enjoying herself out here at Walsall RFC in this women's under 18 showcase event. Grizzle Johnson with the conversion. Just falls short. So the scores are 27-17 in Hartbury College's favour. According to our clock, probably not enough time for Exeter College to come back. However, the first half lasted a rather long time. So very possible that this second half could too. So we won't be making any judgments based on the clock. This is going to be all about the game situation for the 30 girls out there. Walker, that's not the girl you want to be kicking to. She's been fantastic so far today. Womack too in the fly half shirt. But it's intercepted by Tilly Smale, who has been equally fantastic. But on the floor, Jess Phillips gets over the ball. And it's been a real signature for both sides in this game as their work on the floor. Turnovers are plenty. And behind us, we can see the male teams have arrived for the college's cup final at 2.30. Right behind me, I've got USP College and Hereford Sitform College just a few yards to the right of them. They're down here nice and early, taking in this girls' showpiece event. Loose ball, but spilled forward by Hartbury and collected by Exeter College. Now the referee decides we will come back for the scrum. She tries to mark out the uh, the mark on the on the surface. Always tricky on these artificial surfaces is marking out the scrum. Ball in the scrum, gets to the back to college and stands a grizzled Johnson now Walker who steps inside beautifully that first line of defense big big Hartbury College defense Williams and Hopkins with the double tackle Plowman well, she's not easy to bring down and once again makes decent ground. Womack feeds Molly Thomas. But what a tackle that is. Amelia Williams. Oh, that was a huge tackle from Amelia Williams. The Hartford College Lou said. And that's the game, the final play of the game, Hartbury College win this women's under 18 showcase event. Beating Exeter College 27 points to 17. They will receive the trophy in just a few moments time. A fantastic first half from Hartbury College doing the job. A 20 nil advantage they took into the second half, but Exeter College came charging back Hartbury College doing just enough to hold on for that 27-17 victory in this women's under 18 showcase event. We see here those first half tries from Hartbury College. It was good handling and it was Nat Metcalf, Nell Metcalf, sorry, the fullback with the first try. 
And then the ball came down, the ball went one way, Olivia Constable went the other. For her second try, or for her side second try, I should say. And then in the very final play of the first half, Hartbury College claimed their third try of the game. Burton Shaw out to Brennan, and it was Tilly Smale with some fantastic footwork strength and finishing to get across on the left-hand side. Exeter College came charging back in the second half, though. Making a real game of it after what was a tough first half. And it was guess who, Lily Plowman, who got herself across the line. Hartbury College hit back with some good handling. They bundled it over. I'll tell you what, I missed who scored this first time round. Let me see if I can get it this time. I think I have. I think it was Seren Webster in number 20 who got herself across the line. There we go. This great break from Priest, though, saw Exeter College hit back. And it was the fullback, Evie Walker, who deservedly crossed the line for her sides. Second of the afternoon. And then to round things off for Exeter College, Wide they went, Priest again showing the composure and Plowman crossing the line for a second try of what was a magnificent game. That was it though for Exeter College. Ultimately that Hartbury College first half lead was too much to come back from. And it was Hartbury College that claimed this women's under 18 showcase event, a first of its kind. 27-17, they took it. And it looks as though the medals are ready, the trophy is out there. I had a good look at it earlier on. Brand sparkling new trophy that the, R the RFU have made for the Hartbury College girls to take home. And not too long a trip home either. About an hour down the road here from Warsaw RFC for Hartbury College. Our friend Nick B. Images out there ready to capture that winning moment. Oh dear, I seem to be in the background of it as well. Hopefully he'll chop me out of that. Exeter College here to receive their runners-up medals. What a performance they put in as well. 20 nil down against the machine that is Hartbury College. Could have been perilous for them, but they showed great determination to come back. Little wonder this is a successful side in their own right. Some fantastic results in 15 a side game. Allied, of course, to, as we've mentioned a couple of times, their under 18 girls triumph at Roslyn Park last week. And uh, just a little little delay, I think we might be waiting for the PA to uh, be up and running. Either that or everyone is just enjoying themselves out here in the cold. A word to our cameramen who are up above me, by the way. Very exposed to the elements are they. Been a long old shift for them. Rossland Park HSBC National School 7s followed by the Sedba 10s and the Caldecott 10s. Now here at Walsall RFC for this double header, the Women's Under 18 Showcase event. And at 2.30 p.m., we'll be going live a little bit before 2.25 p.m., the Men's Under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup Final between Hereford Sixth Form College and USP College formerly Civic College over in Exeter. They've made the long trip to the west today. And here we go, Exeter College receive their runners-up medals. The end of a fine season for these young ladies. And a fine performance here this afternoon. 
well, this morning the game began, didn't it? 11.30 kickoff. They put in a real shift. Or a few colleges councillor there handing out the medals. A great performance from some of these Exeter College ladies. Not least, number eight, Lily Plowman, who put in a hell of a shift for her side. Her outside centre, Danny Priest, outstanding as well, and Evie Walker at fullback. Just three of the standout players from this Exeter College side. Tremendous second half performance to really make a game of it. From the women in the white and blue. And we now await the winners, Hartbury College. Well, they're used to that, aren't they? Hartbury College, the winners. Whether in the men's game, the women's game, the university game or the school game. When the clock stops, Hartbury College tend to end up on top. And they have done again this afternoon in this showcase event. As up they come, slowly but surely, Hannah Kibble, I think, directing them forwards. What a second half she had. Part of that outstanding back row trio for Hartbury College. Hannah Kibble, Sophie McQueen, and Gwenon Hopkins. They were outstanding. Amelia Williams as well, whose huge tackle forced the error right at the end of the game. But every single one of these Hartbury College women stepped up in a big way in this one. Scrum half, Matilda Ryle just receiving her medal there. She was fantastic as well. Temperatures have dropped. You can see a few, few of the girls shivering as they receive their medals. Now Metcalf just joining her team there in their lineup. Fantastic opening half. She had that contest with Evie Walker. The two fullbacks going head to head was one of the great highlights. Through they all go. Great turnover, wasn't it, from Ellie Murrell. She receives her medal. Rosanna Burtonshaw, a fantastic game, and just trotting across with her medal goes Tilly Smale, the left winger who scored that wonderful try, but also had a couple of turnovers that any open side would be proud of. As across they come, the final few ladies now. I think we might be running short of medals. I think that could be what the uh, the hold up is here. Naomi Brennan, the skipper, has received hers. Olivia Constable too. Took a bit of a bang after scoring her try but well enough to receive her medal. All that remains now is for the trophy to be presented. And I think they're going to gather here in a bit of a tight formation. Our man Nick B. Images getting those photos in. Good man, Nick. We are just short of a trophy and the, I think I might have been falsely claiming Naomi Brennan as the skipper, because it's Olivia Constable that's going to receive the trophy. She walks over with that inaugural cup for this women's showpiece event. Trots to the middle. Constable and Brennan are going to lift it together. There they go. Hartbury College 
are your women's under 18 showcase event winners. The Harpery machine rumbles on. A fantastic performance from them. And hopefully a sign of things to come this afternoon here at Walsall RFC. Join us from 2.25 p.m. for the men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup Final, Hereford Sixth Form College against USP College. Until then, it's just a huge congratulations, first of all, to Exeter College for a fantastic second half performance, but most of all to Hartbury College, your showcase event winners. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Returnity Play is the UK's leading sports medicine provider for schools and clubs. We ensure sport is safer than ever by making it easy for you to provide gold standard medical care to your players. Our head injury and concussion care service provides your players with seven day a week access to some of the UK's most experienced concussion doctors who make sure the correct diagnosis is made and manage each player's recovery until they are fit to return to sport. We also provide you with the education, policy and administrative support you need to confidently manage injuries, giving you and your players' parents peace of mind. Using our innovative R2P injury management system, injuries can be quickly recorded, parents and staff automatically notified, doctor appointments booked, players' recovery tracked and injury analysis downloaded. Our system even integrates with other school systems, saving you admin time. Our full sports medicine service is tailored to your organization's specific needs, designed to best support your sports program and medical setup. It includes our head injury and concussion care service, plus weekly sports doctor clinics, access to physiotherapists, match day medical support, and more. Return to Play are partnered with over 60 of the UK's leading schools and clubs, Get in touch to find out more.
Fancy Play is the UK's leading sports medicine provider for schools and clubs. We ensure sport is safer than ever by making it easy for you to provide gold standard medical care to your players. Our head injury and concussion care service provides your players with seven day a week access to some of the UK's most experienced concussion doctors who make sure the correct diagnosis is made and manage each player's recovery until they are fit to return to sport. We also provide you with the education, policy and administrative support you need to confidently manage injuries, giving you and your players' parents peace of mind. Using our innovative R2P injury management system, injuries can be quickly recorded, parents and staff automatically notified, doctor appointments booked, players recovery tracked and injury analysis downloaded. Our system even integrates with other school systems, saving you admin time. Our full sports medicine service is tailored to your organization's specific needs, designed to best support your sports program and medical setup. It includes our head injury and concussion care service, plus weekly sports doctor clinics, access to physiotherapists, match day medical support and more. Return to Play are partnered with over 60 of the UK's leading schools and clubs. Get in touch to find out more. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Hello and welcome back to this, the England College's Cup Final here, the ECRFU Under-18 Final between Hereford Sixth Form College and USP College. Now, if you were with us this morning, you will have seen an absolutely fantastic girls showcase final between Hartbury College and Exeter College Under-18 Women. An absolutely fantastic game that went the way of Hartbury College, but a brilliant second half comeback from Exeter College in that one. In this, the men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup final, we should be in for another cracker as well as Hereford Sixth Form College, College come charging onto the field across our screens. They're going to be playing in red and black hoops this afternoon. They're up against USP College, who've come all the way across from Essex today to make this journey. They're just taking their time to come out. Now, before this game, we're going to have a minute's applause. I'm assured that in this game, we will in fact have a minute's applause. Last game, we had a minute's silence followed by a minute's applause because there was a bit of confusion as to which we were doing, so we went for both. USP College entering the field now. But in more important matters, the team sheets. Hereford Sixth Form College, well, up front for them, Josh Dukes, Noah Orton and Crispin Walsh. In the second row, Will Patterson and Theo Collins. And in the back row, Ben Day, Jack McQuiston and Will Priday. Halfbacks, Will Dunaway and Ewan Lewis. Centres, Ben Deards and Will Landon. And the back three, Cam Smith, Ewan Mould and James Castle, who I am assured is the man to look out for this afternoon here at Walsall RFC. USP Civic College, Nathan Hill, Charlie Hopkins, Jack Rickwood up front, Jake Pierman and Shane Shamiaria in the second row. Sam Williamson, Joe Guttridge and Lewis Trickio in the back row. Halfbacks, Hayden Jellis and Will Purdy. 
Centre is Dylan Sykes and Luke Avda McPherson. And in the back three, Lyndon Mukundavore, Joe Braids and Ben Cox. And your replacements for each side, Tom Brewer, Owen Fish, Henry Upham, Warwick Archer, Reese Lewis, Harvey Whitehead and Ben Hopper for Hereford. As our minutes, applause begins. A fantastic tribute there as things kick off to two legends that sadly passed away. Maddie Lawrence, formerly of Yui, whose number 11 shirt has been retired by the club. And David Sims, the former three times international Gloucester and Exeter chief, former member of Exeter College, who of course were playing earlier on today in the girls' showcase. On the field, Hereford Sixth Form College just gathered possession in the backfield in their red and black shirts. On the right-hand side of your screens, on the left-hand side, USP College in the grey with the orange chevron. The rain has started to come down, chilly temperatures here in Walsall, but the atmosphere electric that stands behind me are packed as Sievert College turn the ball over. On the charge, they go. Number eight, Lewis Tricchio looked to carry, but the ball squirted loose. Off comes the Hereford State Form College defence, but too eagerly, not rolling away in the tackle. So it'll be a penalty to USP. And a shot at goal is the call, and it looks like right wing Joe Braids will be the man on the tee this afternoon. And we see here Hereford Sixth Form College just a bit over eager there, flopping over and then not getting out the way in time. The excitement of a cup final in the early minutes. Chance then for USP College. Braids strikes it cleanly and gives his side a 3-0 lead. Superb start from USP College. For Hereford, early work needed to be done just to stabilize that. Early bit of nerves and perhaps a chance here from the spilled ball. Ball into the hands of the big loose head, Josh Jukes. He's another what we've been told to look out for this afternoon. On to his front row colleague. Crispin Walsh, a ponytailed front rower. Playing with penalty advantage, so they stab this one across. Claimed by USP, so we'll come back for the penalty to Hereford Sixth Form College. 
tackle and no roll, eight. Hereford have been in rare form on their way to this final. Victories over Sirencester, Bridgewater, Exeter and Shrewsbury on the way. As we see here, Jukes with the big carry. Then it's his front row colleague, okay. Walsh. Okay. Straight on you. And like Hereford before them, USP not rolling away at that breakdown. Unlike USP, Hereford don't opt for the points though. They've gone to the corner, but the ball's gone long. And it's an escape for USP. They keep the ball alive through contact. And we'll have a charge, but ball spilled. A huge tackle coming in. Hereford fly half. Ewan Lewis with the big hit, forcing the error from USP. Giving Hereford possession just about on the 22 here. Jukes, another carry from the big loose head. Lewis feeds it wider, but again the ball spilled. It's a greasy ball out there. During the break between the uh, the women's game and this game, we had about an hour, and pretty much consistently through that hour, the rain came hammering down. It's slowed now, but it has created a very wet pitch, a very wet ball. And for those of you interested in offering some sympathy to the way of your production team, a very wet commentary and filming tower as well. Bynes. Set. USP. And hold. Get the ball to the back of the scrum. And they'll look to clear. That's a big left foot windscreen wiper type of a kick from James uh, from Ben Cox. Allowing Castle, the danger man, the chance to counter attack for Hereford. Lewis picks his options, but Ends up finding neither off the back of his hooker, Noah Orton. And I thought it had been turned over by USP, but it was illegally so. And the referee saying number four. Coming at the side, the ball was loose, but he was never behind the back foot. I think it's the call. Kick doesn't make touch though. But once again, we see another huge tackle from Hereford Sit Form College. This time it's the left wing, Cam Smith, whose massive, massive tackle sees the ball squirting loose. And we end up kind of back where we started this passage of play with a scrum Hereford. Just look at this on the replay. The kick doesn't go, comes in field. Now that is a perfect man and ball hit from Cam Smith, knocking the ball loose. And in greasy conditions like this, that's the thing to do, isn't it? Target the ball in the tackle, because it may well come loose. Ball almost turned over at the scrum. Goes round 90, referee will pull it back. Bit of a shoelace moment, so referee just calls time off. An extraordinarily long first half in the women's game earlier on. Will we do another one in this one? We'll find out. Three they go. Lewis the fly half. Difficult one to gather. And spilled, so we come back for a scrum, and I rather fancy we are going to see a few scrums today. It's that kind of a day. Difficult one to gather for Lewis. Well, it has to be said, fantastic step from him, just to avoid the unrushing defense. Set. USP with the put in. 
Here they go. Oh, it's a fantastic break from their outside centre after McPherson. But once again, as the tackle comes in, the ball spills. But McPherson, Luca after McPherson, an electric break from inside of his own half. Brings his side back into Hereford territory for the first time since that early penalty. Look at this, after McPherson on the charge, slows his feet. Oh, I was wrong, I thought it came loose in the tackle, but in fact, it was from the pass that the ball went forward. Another scrum. Might be worth us keeping track of how many of these there are today. I suspect we could be, uh, Crouch. be hitting some big numbers. Bind. Set. Will done away to feed. Ball to the tail, but his side get the scrum as he gets the ball away. Nathan Hill, a judge to be coming in on the angle there. In a sign of the way conditions have changed, our two touch judges, who were also the touch judges for the, uh, for the previous game, Casey Allen and Becky Piddleston have uh, popped on their waterproof tops and trousers for this one. Match the numbers. They'll give you a chance. There you go. Hereford Sixth Form College with the line out. It's a lovely line out. Ball to the tail and the mall forms. A little scrappy and getting the ball back, but it gets there eventually, and they're on the charge now. Oh, Hereford Sit Form College, someone's lost a boot out there. But these Hereford boys don't mind as they march on 20 yards, 25 yards now. Penalties coming from every which way, but the mall keeps rumbling up to the 22 now we are. Oh, what an astonishing bit of play. And I can tell you how far that's gone because there's a boot astray from where that mall started. And they have gone from 10 metre line in their own half to the 22 line in the opposition half with one driving mall. That is absolutely astonishing from Hereford Sixth Form College. A statement of intent from their forward pack. Four boots good. The game 11 minutes old. And Hereford Sixth Form College have just said, okay, we're good. can you match Time's us up on. front? Yeah. Just look at this wall go. And we see multiple infringements to try and stop yeah. it. But really nothing could stop that power and momentum. Eventually, they come to ground. But from the penalty to the corner, a knock on in the line out and we'll have a USP scrum. And despite that 60 metre territory loss, USP College live to fight another day. You see here, as they try to set up that mall, the ball squirts loose, drops to the floor. So, so tricky with the ball as wet as it is. A 
And for those that Go. haven't played on these 4G Five. surfaces, they stay Six. wet for a very long time. So although, although the rain may have slowed, the, uh, the greasiness on that pitch will remain for quite some time. USP then through the boot once more of Ben Cox look to clear their lines. James Castle, well, he's going to look to counter, isn't he? The little wizard in the backfield and he beats the first man. USP just almost got their hands on it. But in the end, having almost got the turnover, they got too enthusiastic. Coming up offside and Ewan Lewis We'll look to the corner. Ball doesn't quite make it though. Gathered by Hayden Jellis. Scrum half for USP. As again, Cox goes long. And again, Hereford will look to counter. Well, you can tell that James Castle is a man that Hereford Sixth Form College are very excited about the fullback because every time he touches the ball, the 50 or so Hereford Sit Form College fans behind me go absolutely bananas. A firm handoff from Lewis Trickio, the USP number eight. That is some handoff from the big forward. Like it, off you go. It's a yellow card for a late tackle from Hereford blindside Ben Day. I didn't actually spot that, if I'm honest, but referee says that's the second one. So off he goes. Ben Day will have a seat on the sidelines for a moment or two. Roll on. Yeah, here he comes. There's USP College. Make a change. Half game rule in operation, of course. So we will see replacements throughout this game. So Cox gets the ball almost up to the 22. USP line up to the middle into the hands of Trickio the man with the giant fend but Hereford Sitform College have countered that more brilliant, taking it back to where it started. So USP have to go slightly from the back foot. The ball spills loose. That's so unfortunate there. As the ball spilled loose, Hereford Sitform College tried to make the big counter attack. But the ball just knocked on by them as well. So we will have another scrum. I told you there'd be a few. Yeah, there was one on the play before. We didn't get the number. We got that one. That's fine, yeah. yeah. Next Gen 15 team enjoyed a fine stay in the wonderful town of Walsall now. today. Last yeah. night, indeed. So we see the spill here. Just spilled and okay. Castle. Oh, unlucky. Could have come off his foot. Nearly, nearly breaking away there. For Hereford Sixth Form College. Bind. Set. 100 year anniversary of our host club this year. 1922 they were founded. And if you're anything like me, it will blow your mind that it's been 100 years since then. But it has been. Centenary year for Walsall RFC. Wonderful hosts they've been as well. A first year, though, for this event. The Women's Under-18 Showcase 
and the men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup final. Hereford Sixth Form College on the attack, but the ball's charged down and into the hands of USP College number eight, Lewis Trickio. After McPherson's kick is charged down, but he gathered it and gets his side back on the front foot. Oh, that's a clever, clever little offload from Jake Pierman. But once again, we see a small knock on. And we have a scrum. A tough day to be a front rower. Good shift that from USP, but Hereford get the ball away and they look to the boot of Lewis, who has made great ground. Although Linden Mukundavire has countered that kick fantastically. I wasn't quite sure where he was going at first, but he knew. But again, another spill. And we're playing advantage, Hereford Sixth Form College. And we come back for the scrum. An old fashioned game, this, isn't it? Move the ball from A to B, and the forwards will gather at B for a scrum. There'll be a few parents watching who remember rugby of those eras. Hereford Sixth Form College intent on using the very full width of this pitch. Almost underneath my Five. nose there for a second was left Six. wing Cam Smith hugging the left touch line. And hold. Ball to the tail. And they are going to come to this left hand side. Fly half Lewis has a look out the back to Castle. Who's well snaffled in the midfield by USP. Big carry from Will Priday. The number eight. Some big, big contacts so far this game. Castle, again, he's seeing a lot of the ball, isn't he? And his pass goes awry. USP have the option, scrum or line out. Option line out. Okay. And they've gone for the well, line out. Here, Perhaps those front row forwards needing a bit of a rest. USP College, by the way, since we told you how Hereford have been getting on. On their route here, Rygate College in the last 32, Farnborough in the last 16, Hills Road in the quarterfinals, and then Loughborough Sixth Form College, an 11 8 narrow win in the semi final. It's been a Really close, gritty route through to this final for USP College. And in the carrying of number eight, Lewis Trickio, they have the man who embodies that kind of gritty work. As they make a charge now, Sam Williamson, the blind side, working hard to get across the gain line. After McPherson as well, this is superb carrying work in close quarters from USP. Tipped on once more by Jake Pierman. Now they look a bit wider. The ball behind the back of the onrushing Hereford defence. Full width of the pitch now they've used, all the way off to that left hand touch line. They'll come back the other way through the big man, Trickio. 
seen such evidence of his carrying already, but a huge counter ruck from USP. Ripped clear in the tackle, is it? No, the referee says no release. The ball was on the floor already. So we'll have a USP penalty, and this time they go to the corner. Clearly that early shot for their 3-0 lead was just a nerve settler from Joe Braids. Now they go to the corner. Well, we've already seen what Hereford can do at mall time. Will USP try and respond in kind off this line up? Well, they bring it down for them all and they get it moving early on. But Hereford State Fulham College have done a brilliant job of getting that to deck early. So around the corner. I think goes Trickio once more. The metronome in the back row. At number eight. Shamiaria this time takes it in. Sykes now. The inside centre. Into the hands of Purdy. He cuts back inside. He's met superbly. By Ben Hopper, I think that was in the 20 T-shirt. Crucial period of defence this for Hereford Sixth Form College. Working so hard to get off the line. While well, the boys in black and red. Dancing back inside comes Purdy. Still they go to USP. Patience in their attack. Now they inject some pace. Pulled just short is Dylan Sykes. There's space left if they can get the ball there, but it's spilled backwards, I think. Through they go again. Met brilliantly is Jack Rickwood by the Hereford defence, but now they go wide and again, a huge shot coming in. Cam Smith stepping off his wing again to great effect. USP doing well just to hold on to possession. This is tremendous defence from Hereford Sixth Form College. Knocked on on the floor by USP. Referee says though that we're going to come back for a USP penalty for a high tackle from Hereford Sit Form College. So USP go short on the charge again in Hereford once again. Meeting fire with fire. So USP look wide. Is there space in a different channel for them? Perhaps just a little bit. Mukundavire, no. He's hauled short. This is wonderful defensive work from Hereford Sixth Form College. Can they still hold out though? USP. Phase after phase of attack from the Essex side. Through the hands it goes. Across the line this time, are they? They are indeed. And it's the tight head prop, Jack Rickwood. Well, it was wonderful, wonderful defence from Hereford Sick Form College to hold them out for so long. But as USP went right, it left a bit of space on the left-hand side. And it was the quick hands from Ben Cox that allowed Rickwood to go charging over into the left-hand corner. Jack Rickwood Great, thank you. with the first try of the game. And Joe Braids will stand over the conversion over on that far touchline.
just on the outskirts of his range. You feel that one. He had to give it a real swing. So it's unconverted, but USP leading Hereford Sixth Form College, eight points to nil. Round about 10 minutes left in the half. Strong start from Danny Clear's side, ably assisted by Jack Daly and George Phelps Knight. Well, they have to say, Kieran Hallam, the head coach of Hereford Sixth Form College, will be delighted with the way his side defended that USP onslaught there. Although USP scored, Hereford forced them to score right on the touchline, and that's really sometimes all you can ask in the face of such an onslaught. Can Hereford respond? Well, they stab it through. Not a bad option in such greasy conditions. Cox just collects it, dots it down. We'll have a goal line dropout. Now, goal line dropouts. Since they're not going to take this one quickly. Goal line dropouts. There is nothing I'd love to see more on a goal line dropout than the receiver at least having a look at drop goal in response. Charge down. So Sivik, Hereford rather, go on the attack. On the charge they are. Carriers offering themselves every which way here for Hereford Sixth Form College. They go right through the hands. They go ball bouncing and across the line they go. What a finish that is. Hereford Sixth Form College. Well, we said, could they respond? They certainly could. How about that? The charge down from the goal line dropout gave them a great platform and they shit the ball through the hands. Lewis out to his number eight, Will Priday, showing great strength to get over. Everything okay? Dancing along that touchline and using his power to stay in field and get across the line. Will Priday. Well, you see what it means to these lads by the look on his face as he crossed that line. What an opportunity for these boys and what an attempt at a conversion that was. Off the uprights from right on the touchline there for USP. Conversion doesn't go hitting the upright, but they've narrowed the gap down to just three points. Hereford Sixth Form College five, USP College eight. I think it's Ben Deards on kicking duty for Hereford Sixth Form College. Playing it inside center today. Deep kick from Hereford, asking Sivik to go from deep, which they try to do, and it's a big, big counter ruck from Hereford Sixth Form College. Open side, Jack McQuiston had a little look at going for the turnover and then decided Probably it was in his best interest not to. This time he does have a little snap at it and then bounces out to move on to the next. Nudge forward. Oh, superbly gathered. On that right wing. But a, what a tackle that is as well. Harvey Whitehead, it was on the carry, met with force by Shane Shamiaria. Cox looks to counter. He's well met. I'll tell you what, if there is a man in this USP team that you don't want to be, in this Hereford team rather, that you don't want to be trying to take on one on one, it's left wing Cam Smith. His tackling has been ferocious here in this first half. It's 
So Hereford have the ball following on from that Smith tackle. Ball lost forward into touch. So we'll have a scrum. Feels like a while since the last scrum, actually, doesn't it? After a flurry in the opening 25 minutes or so. We see that USP bundled Hereford Sixth Form College into touch. And it was spilled on the way out, which gave USP the option. And the option they go for is scrum. And why not? Left hand Crouch. side of the scrum, natural arc for Five. the scrum half. Set. Should see here more than number eight challenging that fly half channel right from the pickup. Out Instead, the ball pops straight out, tunnel. Chilly late March afternoon in Walsall. USP. Oh, it's a good move that. Ball into the hands of Makandavire. But the referee says the ball had just gone forward. Reprieve for Hereford Sixth Form College there because USP were away. But with the on rushing defence coming up. As we see here, the ball comes out and it's that aggressive defensive line that just forces the pass. So Makandavire a little forward and gives Hereford Sixth Form College one of the game's classic attacking platforms. Centre field scrum, bang on the 22. Options left and right. And the option they go with is left. But the ball spilled. USP have the advantage. Try scorer Hopkins. Uh, Pitt. Not Hopkins, rather. Rickwood. I do apologise. Carried it in. And Will Purdy absolutely hoist that into the air. Joe Braids is in hot pursuit but calmly dealt with by Harvey Whitehead. Okay, We're in 21. Really intense encounter in the early stages. Charging through the middle from nowhere. Go Hereford Sit Form College. Quick ball to the left-hand side. Out to Bende, back on the field. Through the middle. Goes Bendids. Bendids. Oh. Oh, he made such wonderful ground. Did Bendids. But the ball just came loose at the last. And the referee blows his whistle for half time. So nearly a late, late lead for Hereford Sixth Form College. But as the tackle came in, as we've seen so often with this wet ball, the ball squirted loose and it sends us into the break. USP leading here in this men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup final, eight points to five against Hereford Sixth Form College.
look through the tries here. It took a long time for the black and red wall to be breached by USP. But when they did, look what it means to the big tight head, Jack Rickwood. Up at USP 8-0 in front, thanks to the early Joe Braid's penalty. But Hereford Sixth Form College responding really nicely. A superb, strong finish down the right-hand side from their number eight, Will Priday. And that left us with those half-time scores. Civic, uh, USP rather. Civic's what they used to be called. That's why I keep mixing that one up. I do apologize. USP College, 8-5 up, thanks to that. Rickwood try and Joe Braid's penalty. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home, School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and a regular update of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Well, where did he come from? And how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Return to Play is the UK's leading sports medicine provider for schools and clubs. We ensure sport is safer than ever by making it easy for you to provide gold standard medical care to your players. Our head injury and concussion care service provides your players with seven day a week access to some of the UK's most experienced concussion doctors who make sure the correct diagnosis is made and manage each player's recovery until they are fit to return to sport. We also provide you with the education, policy and administrative support you need to confidently manage injuries, giving you and your players' parents peace of mind. Using our innovative R2P injury management system, injuries can be quickly recorded, parents and staff automatically notified, doctor appointments booked, players' recovery tracked and injury analysis downloaded. Our system even integrates with other school systems, saving you admin time. Our full sports medicine service is tailored to your organization's specific needs, designed to best support your sports program and medical setup. It includes our head injury and concussion care service, plus weekly sports doctor clinics, access to physiotherapists, match day medical support and more. Return to Play are partnered with over 60 of the UK's leading schools and clubs, Get in touch to find out more. And here we go, back underway here for the second half of this men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup Final. Sevic College, USP College, 
playing from right to left. They lead Hereford Sixth Form College on your left-hand side, eight points to five. And it's a good clearance from Hereford Sixth Form College to start this second half off. They've made a couple of changes as well on in the number 16 shirt, Kelly Butcher. And his first line out was a success. Through go USP on the charge, but a bit of confusion there. Two men trying to collect the ball. Ends up with neither. Black. Neither or neither. Yep. Uh, and we will Five. have, much Six. like in the first half, a scrum. And hold. USP looking to get off the line early, but Hereford sit from college, make a bit of ground, and then it's a bit of a silly penalty on the floor from USP. Seven on the floor. Hereford opt for touch from the penalty and make decent ground. We see here. Big carry from Will Landon. And as they look to play the ball away, the big hand just comes swiping in from USP. An easy one for the referee. Right there. Hereford go to the tail, gathered safely. Well, what can they do from the more we saw in the first half? what they could do, a 60 metre mall they had there. And on this one, they've already got the penalty. USP collapsing it. So did sees what he can do. And nearly, nearly pays off. As Cam Smith got a toe on the ball on the right wing, he switched from the left to the right by the looks of things for this second half. An absolutely barnstorming first half with the young men. And the rain must have slowed a bit because the Hereford sick form lads have, uh, have moved from the stands to the touchline. So either they can't can't help but get closer, closer to the action or the rain might have slowed a bit. I know what you're thinking, surely you can tell but I've got about 87 layers on, so it's difficult. Hereford line out. How will them all go? Brought down safely. USP tried to sack it. But Hereford do really well to move it to one side. And now the all goes. USP may be on it, possibly. Ball goes to deck. So they go through and it's you and Lewis, the fly half, carrying like a second row there. On they rumble and across the line they go. And it's Josh Jukes. The loose head to watch. Josh Jukes goes barreling over from close range. He was brought down short, but he had one opportunity to get that big reach out. And boy, did he take it. We see here Jukes, he's brought short and he's got an opportunity to place it, which he takes. And that Puts Hereford Sixth Form College into the lead with the conversion to come. 
as Dukes engages with his schoolmates on the touchline here. Conversion doesn't quite make it for Hereford Sixth Form College, but they lead now 10 points to eight. They've been behind all game. But five minutes into this second half, they're now in front. A popular man is Josh Jukes. I was speaking to a few of the players in the clubhouse before the game, and uh, he was a man flagged. Both as one to watch. I want to have a bit of a laugh with as well. And the tails are up now for Hereford Sit Form College. Volume has gone up. Power plays coming everywhere, but the ball just spilled, and that just stymies the momentum. Though the referee may have missed it. This we seem to be still playing, and the ball very much still in Hereford Sixth Form College possession. Players seem happy enough though, perhaps the judge to have gone backwards. So, on the back foot, Lewis sends the ball high to Cox. Stabs it through. Harvey Whitehead instead, ops, looked like he was gonna have a a little counter-attack instead opted for the boot but it came off the side a bit and it's drifted into touch usp i'll have the line out throwing okay thank you Will. there are some outstanding fashion choices from some of the hereford sixth form college supporters Pretty sure I've seen one in ski goggles. Although, mind you, with temperatures as they are, not necessarily the worst choice of eyewear. USP on the carry and with advantage as well. And now that advantage becomes the full penalty. Entry. And there is plenty of noise coming from the field from both sides, screaming at each other to organize themselves. Yes, Pete, opt to go to the corner and they make a pretty good fist of it. They're into the 22. Thanks to Dylan Sykes's boot. We see here, in comes Reese Lewis. Hereford Sixth Form College, and then he's followed up by his teammate. Not quite from the right direction. Scrub. Stolen by Hereford, though, but stolen back by USP. But as Dylan Sykes thought he was away, there's a knock on in the line out. The referee brings us back. I'd not said advantage over. Because there was a knock, a knock on, on in the line out. Scrub. And as the referee says, he hadn't called advantage over. Thank goodness, I imagine Hereford Sixth Form College are thinking. Because Dylan Sykes was a way. We see it here. The knock on in the line out from USP. Falls today. He thinks, oh, I'll just give this a little stab through. And it was Five. gobbled up by Sykes, but fortunately, Six. from Hereford's point of view, playing with advantage. So they will have the opportunity to clear their lines from this scrum and Julie take that opportunity and take it very, very well indeed. Working their way up all the way into the USP half from on their own try line. That is an absolutely wonderful clearing kick from you and Lewis back on. he's had a very composed game it has to be said through the line they go oh Reese Lewis getting very close to an interception there I'm not even sure that was what he was going for but the ball coming very very close to his fingertips 
USP get away with it though and have the ball in their grasp. Luca after McPherson has to stick his boot on the ball. Hereford playing with advantage because USP were offside from the kick. In front of the kicker. And that's what that does when you put that pressure on. It forces the, opportunities, the opposition to rush what they're doing. Three of you. And in rushing the kick, it meant the chase never got back in time and the chase was offside. So Hereford take advantage and pump it just inside the 22. And another chance to set up that formidable maul of theirs. We've seen in the first couple in this second half after that monster effort in the first half that USP are looking to sack early. Let's see what they do here. Safely brought down by Herefords. USP did indeed try to sack it early again. A bit of a trick play from Hereford, who created a bit of a split in the line-out and then charged through the middle of that split. Fast hands in the midfield into the, the hands of Whitehead, who goes on an amazing little run into the heart of the 22. And then USP and Fringe. And surely, surely, oh, I thought Hereford were going to go for the points, but instead they go wide, they think there's a chance. Out here on the left wing, Day goes bouncing off the tacklers. He's held just short. I was convinced they were going to go for three points there. Instead, looking for the try. Oh, Hereford Sixth Form College. Into the hands of the try scorer, Josh Jukes. The volume raises around these parts when he gets his hands on the ball. Ben Day goes burrowing and now takes the ball on himself. Makes half a yard. Out now to the back line, Lewis. In behind his players. May not matter though, because in the hands of the danger man, Castle. Oh, Castle, that is superbly well dealt with by Sam Williamson. The USP blindside. Flying through. But a penalty, USP. Fantastic work on the floor. From the replacement hooker, Kelly Butcher. Just as Hereford were beginning to build real momentum, Kelly Butcher gets his hands on the ball and earns USP a penalty and they clear it all the way up to the Hereford 10 metre line. Here we go, look at that. In there goes the squat hooker, ripping away at that ball and the referee quite rightly giving him the penalty. Scrappy play over there. Fred, him up. Knocked on and then touch. Oh. Another line out. Just shy of the 10 metre line. Another chance for Butcher to send this one in. Safely brought down this fast ball off the top, but no. Referee says that one was a bit squint. So we'll have another scrum. Answers on a postcard if you're uh, anywhere near the total number of scrums on your guesses right now. Crouch. Bind. Set and hold grind. Big shove from USP. Out the tunnel. Who do really well to hold their shove. And just to clarify that, 
at schoolboy level, you're only allowed to push for one and a half metres at the scrum. Which, let me tell you, when you are nose to the ground, eight bodies pushing one way, eight the other, it is pretty difficult to tell just how far or how little you have travelled. USP doing really well to hold their shove there. And it's another massive scrum, and again, they managed to hold it. Huge scrum from USP. Almost deserve more reward for that than they get. As it is, Hereford get the ball into the hands of Castle, who gets it now. One more, and then receives it on the return. But it is a brilliant bit of cover tackle work from Joe Guttridge, the USP open side. He's got a few choice words to say to the Hereford fullback as they get off the floor as well. All's fair in love and war. And it's Guttridge who almost stole the line out, but instead it's Day on the charge for Hereford Sixth Form College. Well tidied up by Noah Orton. Lewis sends it into the midfield, but over oh, the ball, oh, that is fantastic, fantastic play. By USP number eight, Lewis Trickio. Well, we said his name a fair few times in the first half, didn't he? Didn't we? And in this second half, that's a big moment from him. A clever moment from Reese Lewis to keep the ball in field for the penalty, and Lewis receives the ball back again on this near side. Carried in by Hereford Sickland College. I do apologise, we don't have a 23 on our team sheet. So we'll just to refer to the new entrant as number 23. Ben Cox tidies up for USP, but Hereford are absolutely flying through here and earning the penalty in the process. The atmosphere here at Walsall RFC is building and building and building as more and more of these supporters move from the stands to the touchline, eager to get with as close to the play as they possibly can. Got a sub? Yeah. Sub. He's done? Okay. All right. Five metre line out, Hereford Sixth Form College. Ball comes down safely, does it? Not straight, says the referee. Time is over there. Option, scrum line. Scrum. We'll have a scrum. USP ball, five metres out. An opportunity goes begging for Hereford Sixth Form College. I'll make play, gents. Line up, not straight. <laughs> Coming up for about 15 minutes left in the game. And he's still absolutely on a knife edge. 10 8, Hereford Sixth Form College lead. Anyone just joining us? Hereford are on the left hand side of your screen in red and black. USP on the right, in the grey, and it's Hereford making a real mess of that USP exit. Held up, carried over. They're actually forcing them back over their own try line, so we'll come back for a five metre scrum. Hereford sixth form college ball. Making more than a mess of that USP exit strategy there. It looked rather more like Af the Americans trying to leave Afghanistan. Hereford looked to the back line, but it spilled, turned over. Guess who? Joe Guttridge, the USP open side, and he gets himself beyond his own 22. USP 
living dangerously at times, but surviving. And surviving well, as on the attack they go. Brave tackle that, once again, from Cam Smith. Defensive rock in the back three for Hereford. Hereford, by the way, have an annual game against Hereford Cathedral School, local rivals. Hereford Cathedral School, one of the one of the older rugby playing schools in the country. And this year, although the Cathedral School won, it was a really, really narrow game, 49. Hereford Sixth Form College had a chance at the end to win it. But a bit of a silly penalty just costing them. But the fact that they had the chance to win there just shows you how far they have come. And they've stepped up again to make this final, but there is space on the left-hand side for USP College. They're up onto the 22. Ball spilled though, but offside were Hereford Sitform College. That line speed that forced the error just a little too over eager. Yeah. See here, Hereford just up a little too snappily. Puts USP under pressure and they spill the ball. Uh, 12. Yeah, it's like the odd sight of the Hereford boys below us watching the game both on the stream and in live action. Why not? Multiple angles, huh? <laughs> but it's the USP boys that are smiling now because over goes the penalty from Dylan Sykes. It puts USP College back in the lead. 11 points to 10 in this absolute nail biter of a men's under 18 EC RFU College's Cup final. USP lead Hereford, 11 points to eight. 12 minutes left to go. Anyone's game still. Lewis collects the kick, moves it to Deard. Deard stabs one through. There is space out there. Just sits up for USP to clear. Kept alive, though, by Hereford Sitform College. So Landon takes the ball on the charge, gets the ball away. Theo Collins now into contact. Lewis to Whitehead, Whitehead, Whitehead is through, Whitehead racing towards the line, Whitehead, oh wonderful, wonderful tap tackle from Cox, the fullback, and it's a penalty to USP, well, Whitehead, Harvey Whitehead with the most electrifying break, looked for all money, like he was away. But Ben Cox, with the last ditch tap tackle. We see here Whitehead just surges into that space, cuts in field, and look at that from Cox, just, just clipping the ankles. And how important will that be when this game shakes out in about 10 minutes time? A huge moment in the game from Ben Cox. Okay, time's back on. Yeah. 
stolen at the line out by Hereford State Form College, but stolen back by guess who? Joe Guttridge. So I think we come back for the knock on in the line out by USP. Guttridge is having a top, top game. And if his performance was to be summarized by anything, it's the tape that is literally hanging off his limbs at this point. He's been everywhere, he's given everything on the open side flank for USP. Five, set. Game in the balance. Just a point separating. Okay, okay. Go again. Stay on your feet. Or was it Boris Ouch. Becker said before Andy Murray won Boys. Wimbledon? Any point will do. Set. That's and the hold, message hold, hold. for Hereford Sitcom College right now. Any points will do. Cam Smith. Well, he had to work backwards to get that ball and then spilled it in the process. So it'll be a scrum down. USP puts in. Just under nine minutes. He had to backpedal to get the ball and in backpedaling got his feet in a bit of a tangle. Bit of a shift for USP. By the looks of things, Will Purdy has Five. moved from fly half to scrum Set. half. Get it straight, gents. Referee not Let's quite happy with that scrum. Now, I don't want to sound like some of you, your Six Nations commentators, but that ball was at the base of the scrum. It's not the referee's Crouch. fault, but perhaps we need to think about Five. the way we ask the scrum to be officiated. If Set. the ball is playable, let's play. Stay nine, leave him now. Playable here. So play, we do. McPherson met with force. Bang on the game line. So Dylan Sykes. Hammers it along, and that's an excellent kick. Still live, still live, still live. Yeah, From the inside good. centre, who's moved in one to play fly half. But Hereford Sixth Form College have kept the ball alive, and away goes Reese Lewis, the replacement scrum half. And his pass in field went awry, but his support play just bundled USP into touch. The atmosphere here is just reaching fever pitch and that's starting to seep through on the field it was the quick line out from hereford sixth form college and the breakout from reese lewis and we see here gets the ball inside it's gobbled up by usp but his supporting cast just hammer the ball into touch and now we see hereford sixth form college set up another one of those monster balls but this time usp respond to it so they have to play to Hereford. And they're under all sorts of pressure as a result. So Castle opts for the boot. And now USP are going to try and go from deep. And they try to volley it out. And then volleying it back in return. Go Hereford. Sixth form college through Whitehead. Tidied up in the end by USP. But that was a wild couple of moments of play from Here's both it. sides. Castle receives the ball. Is there space on the left-hand side? Lewis certainly thinks so. He attacks it. Hereford. Trying to find a way. A point behind, and they have the penalty. 
seven. And Cam Smith comes absolutely charging in, imploring his teammates to go for the posts. Absolutely imploring them. Surely they will take the option. And they do indeed. Ewan Lewis says to the referee, well, we saw USP try to hack it away. And then it's thumped back by Whitehead. Eventually, the ball is kind of under control. Hereford Sixth Form College take it in. And in USP's desperation to stop the attack, they get their hands on the ball, give away the penalty. And Lewis sends it through the uprights. Putting Hereford Sick Form College back in front. 13-11, they lead USP. Four minutes left to play. The ECR a few colleges cup final in the balance here. But the scales tipping Hereford Sick Form College's way with that Lewis penalty. Behind for the whole of the first half, remember, were Hereford Sixth Form College. But they've come back in this second half. And now with four minutes left to play, they have the lead. And they are putting USP under all sorts of, of pressure in possession. And Braids just stabs it over the top, trying to buy a bit of territory for USP. But it's spilled as they tried to gather it. So we'll have a Hereford scrum just shy of the 10 metre line. And there are an absolute gaggle of Hereford sixth form pupils in front of us who are going to go absolutely bananas in about three minutes' time, if their mates can hold on for this one. Three minutes for Hereford Sixth Form College to hold out. Three minutes for USP to turn this one back in their favor. They had the lead for the whole first half. They lost it but regained it. They've Let's lost go, it again. Can they regain it again? Any kind of points will do it for them. But you rather fancy any sort of points for Hereford Sixth Form College will make life very, very tough indeed for USP College. Binds. Right, let him get his bind, oh, yeah, no, and then leave space before we set. Yeah, and Hereford Sixth Form College will be delighted Crouch. with the amount of time this scrum is taking. Bind, set. So the tail of the scrum it goes. Clean ball for Hereford. Out to Lewis who gets a big kick downfield, and there is space for that ball to roll and roll into. Covered by Braids, into touch. But it'll be a Hereford line out inside the USP half. Smart play from Ewan Lewis. They set up for him to be further out, standing at 12 rather than 10, just to give him that extra bit of time and space to spot where the gaps were in the backfield, and he found it beautifully. First job done, Hereford. Ball comes down. Now they set up the ball, and it is rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. 10 meters they've made. Up towards the 22 they go. Brought down by USP. Legally, though, says the referee. 
So did sticks the ball on his boot and finds a wonderful touch. Oh, Hereford Sixth Form College could not have asked for that last minute to go any better. Intelligent play from Ben Deards. Drops the ball onto his left foot. And the bounce of a rugby ball working perfectly for the Hereford inside centre. USP have less than a minute to go the length of the field. Through they go though, guess who? Joe Guttridge. But the ball spills loose to Ben Day. Day. Hereford want to finish things on a real high here. Done away. Reese Lewis, rather, is at nine. Out they go. Whitehead. Ball knocks on. Playing penalty advantage, I think, to Hereford Sixth Form College as Lewis goes on the charge. Oh, he's well met there by Mitch Ham. Hereford. Playing advantage. And how close are we to this being the end of the game? Our clock says 70. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yellow card for the deliberate knock on. Not too many arguments about that one. And I think the referee has just said that this is the last play. So Hereford Sitcorn College tap the ball. Booted out, and Hereford Sitcorn College are your England College's Cup champions for 2022. I told you these supporters would go bananas if their team did it, and bananas they are going. Absolute scenes here at Walsall RFC. Hereford Sixth Form College come from behind and it's a Ewan Lewis penalty that wins the game for Hereford Sixth Form College. USP gave it absolutely everything out here in the Midlands. They held the lead for so, so long, clawing it back once Hereford had gained the lead from them. But Hereford dug in and dug in and dug in. And when they eventually got their chance, Lewis had the composure to bang over the three points. And as the trophies and medals get walked out here at Walsall RFC, it's his team that are the 2022 ECRFU Men's Under-18 Colleges Cup champions. They were made to work for it. They had some comfortable wins on the build-up. 39-7 against Sirencester, 43-7 against Bridgewater, 18-12 at Exeter, 38-17 against Shrewsbury, but this was a game unlike any they had faced on this cup run. A narrow, narrow 13-11 victory. And it was that kind of a game. A real gritty battle from both sides. USP College had some guys that stood up superbly. Ben Cox at fullback was outstanding. Luca Abdo McPherson at 13. Had some huge moments. Jack Rickwood, the try scorer as well. What a moment when he crossed the whitewash back in that first half. Lewis Trickio at eight, but their standout man, USP, surely to most watches. Joe Guttridge on the open side flank, just everywhere, an immense performance. Hereford State Form College. Well, they to a man had to dig ever so deep to get that one over the line. The, the man with the headlines at the end 
is the man to kick the winning points, Ewan Lewis, but there were performances all round of the highest order. Ben Day, well, he had that early yellow card, but he more than made up for it when he came back on the field absolutely everywhere. Will Priday, who scored that first try for his team at number eight, absolutely outstanding. But how about at loose head, Josh Jukes, he scored his side second try. Without that, they could not have achieved what they've achieved today. But over and over again, he performed to an exceptional level. And we just wait here on the field. The uh, the two sides having a bit of a chat before going to receive their medals and the trophy. So we'll just look back through some of the highlights of the game. And as I said, it was USP that took the lead. And it was Jack Rickwood, the tight head prop, crashing over from close range. And we said at the time that being forced to score out wide might be important, and so it was for Hereford Sixth Form College. That was added to, by the way, by Joe Braids. Penalty for an 8-0 lead to USP, but will Priday cut that down early in the second half to 8-5 with that finish on the right-hand side, and look what it meant to him. That was Hereford back in the game. And from back in the game, they went to winning the game. When that man, the loose head Josh Dukes, went crashing over here. Initially looked short, but he had an opportunity to reach. And he got himself across the line to put his side 10-8 in front. USP responded with another penalty to get themselves 11-10 up. But then it all came down to that man, didn't it? Ewan Lewis with the penalty to give Hereford Sixth Form College the 13-11 victory. And this college's cup title, a fantastic achievement from the boys from Hereford. as head coach, Kieran Hallam. There's a little chat with him. In fact, I think that's Andy Duthwaite, the team manager that we can see having a word at the moment. Claire Higginson, the physio, alongside him. And just to her right, I think, is Kieran Hallam, the head coach. Claire Higginson looking very happy indeed. Andy Duthwaite looking as though he's got some serious words to say. A very straight-faced man in that huddle. His boys were magnificent out there. And it's over in the centre of the field, USP College. Well, they gave so much, didn't they? Could not have given more, the boys in grey. Ultimately, it was a game where the clock was going to be the decider in many senses. The game was going this way and, and that by the narrowest of margins at a time. They can be proud of themselves in getting all the way to this final. They've had to fight in every single game and they fought again ever so hard here. They'll be receiving the runners up medals any moment now. Just waiting for uh, Hereford Sixth Form College to finish their debrief from Andy Duthwaite. Looks as though they've tidied everything up over there that they needed to. Chippied along, I think, by uh, some of the officials. Keen to get inside. It is chilly and wet here in Walsall RFC, and I think a few of the officials out there are uh, rather feeling the effects, wanting to get themselves back in the warm. But we have all 30 players, or somewhere near 45, once you include all the subs, all ready to collect their medals. USP despondent, as you might expect having led that game for so long. But when they reflect on it, they will be able to feel very proud indeed of a, a glorious shift and a glorious season. Jack Rickwood there just walking off with his medal, the try scorer. He put in a hell of a shift for his side. So two. Scrum half, Hayden Jealous, another one who had a top game we didn't get the chance to mention earlier. And it's on they go. Got a few hangers on at the back of that uh, 
that USP group. I'm assuming a few of the injured lads rather than just spectators hoping to get their mitts on a medal. You never know though. Through they come though. They're hard to receive those losers medals. But on reflection, as the days go past, these boys can think back on a well-played season. Joe Guttridge walking across in front of me. The open side, what a magnificent game he had. Here though, are the winners. Hereford Sixth Form College, ready to collect their medals and the 2022 trophy. Will Landon, first to collect his, the outside center. Ben Day collecting his, really, really stepped up in the second half to Ben Day. Ewan Lewis, the fly half, the man of the moment, kicked those winning points for his side. Fantastic composure at the crucial moment from the standoff. As his teammates all gather on this right-hand side, there are a few councillors dishing out the medals. Hopefully we've got enough. I wonder what happens if there's not. Do we, uh, do we send one in the post? Last couple to receive theirs now before the big trophy lift in just a couple of seconds time. By the way, one man we didn't mention, Cam Smith on the left wing for Hereford Sixth Form College. He switched from the left to the right for the second half and what an epic game he had. It's the two centers, they're gonna lift it together. Ben Deards and Will Langdon. Deards and Landon. There we are, Hereford Sixth Form College. Your 2022 EC RFU Men's Under 18 <laughs> Colleges <laughs> Cup winners. 11-8, 13-11, in fact, <laughs> that they beat USP College. Hereford Sixth Form College. Your 2022 EC RFU Men's Under 18 College Cup winners. What a performance. And so, as Hereford paused for that magic photo moment, we can reflect on an epic day here at Walsall RFC. We saw Hartbury College win that women's under 18 showcase event, an absolute cracker of a game against Exeter College this morning. And then this afternoon, it was Hereford Sixth Form College against USP College. Hereford Sixth Form College winning 13-8 to claim the 2022 men's under 18 ECRFU Colleges Cup title. An inaugural event here at Walsall RFC and what a triumph it was. It's been a pleasure to guide you through it. It's been a pleasure to guide you through things over the last couple of weeks. We can't wait to have you back with us here on Next Gen 15. Tune in next Wednesday for Cardinal Newman against the Lambs. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Well, where's he come from? All your
middle school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Ensure sport is safer than ever by making it easy for you to provide gold standard medical care to your players. Our head injury and concussion care service provides your players with seven day a week access to some of the UK's most experienced concussion doctors who make sure the correct diagnosis is made and manage each player's recovery until they are fit to return to sport. We also provide you with the education, policy, and administrative support you need to confidently manage injuries, giving you and your players' parents peace of mind. Using our innovative R2P injury management system, injuries can be quickly recorded, parents and staff automatically notified, doctor appointments booked, players' recovery tracked, and injury analysis downloaded. Our system even integrates with other school systems, saving you admin time. Our full sports medicine service is tailored to your organization's specific needs, designed to best support your sports program and medical setup. It includes our head injury and concussion care service, plus weekly sports doctor clinics, access to physiotherapists, match day medical support, and more. Return to Play are partnered with over 60 of the UK's leading schools and clubs. Get in touch to find out more. Thank you. 